Hello everybody and welcome to the Boxing Locker, the best boxing channel on YouTube. Not quite yet, but we'll get there. I think the information is top tier. Hopefully you guys agree with me. Um, now, this video is uh, going to be a contentious subject. I'm just going to crack straight on into it, explain my thought process. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to um, try my best to incorporate uh, some clips of my favorite fighters using exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and I'm going to do that uh, hopefully without infringing any sort of copyright rules. Remember this video is for educational purposes, so it should be all right. Anyway, that is, um, is the kind of uh, talk around. This is the title, why you should bend at the waist and not at the knees to make punches miss. Bend at waist, not at knees. That's what we're looking for. Right, so when I make punches miss, I'm using what is known as a hip hinge, okay? A hip hinge. What we see on Instagram now, all these people throwing their punches over here, the people on the pads are throwing the pads over here, people defending like this, not actually going anywhere, their head's in exactly the same spot, the punches aren't actually missing, they're just dipping down to roll under, it doesn't work, okay, it absolutely 100% certifiably does not work, there is not one successfully defensive master in boxing who has ever, ever, ever used that format of making punches miss, okay? Some of the best defensive boxers in history, um, and maybe four of four of, of my absolute all-time favorites within this list. Um, Pernell Whitaker, bent at the waist primarily. Legs are involved, I'll explain that shortly, but bent primarily at the waist. James Tony, loads of waist movement, loads of waist movement, all using that hip hinge. Floyd Mayweather, incredible hip hinge, incredible head movement. Making punches miss, rolling under, using the shoulders, loads of hip pinch, not tons of leg bend. Um, uh, Nicolino Locke, incredibly good head movement, bend at the waist. Roberto Duran, bend at the waist. Julio Cesar Chavez, bend at the waist. Um, did I say Nicolino Locke? Yes, I did say Nicolino Locke. Uh, that, that, I mean, as a child, Alfredo Benitez, um, I'm trying to think of other great uh, movers of the head who bent at the waist. Even, even look at the golden era outside of Roberto Duran. You've got uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, Marvin Hagler, all bending, all using the waist movement. Um, and, and that is an absolute certifiable requirement of good head movement, good defense. If you don't do those things, you won't make punches miss. More modern boxers, not only Floyd Mayweather, but Andre Ward, Bernard Hopkins, um, Adrian Broner, uh, even more recently, Canelo, Terence Crawford. Loads of bending at the waist, bending at the waist, make people miss, shutting down space, moving out, all of those great things. It's all made possible by a good hip hinge. I will try and incorporate as many videos of all them names as I possibly can at the end, but please do watch some videos of those guys defending and learn exactly what I'm talking about. So, the hip hinge, what do I mean by that? Anybody who's lifted weights knows that when you deadlift, you hinge the hips, come up, bend at the waist, offset your weight by pushing your hips back and your head forward, right? That's exactly what I'm talking about. now. The weightlifting version of that is probably a lot more exaggerated than what we really need to be doing. However, boxing stance, I'm in my position. I'm just gonna hold this nice, easy, old school position. Weight 60, 40, back leg, hand tucked in, lead hand a bit lower, okay? This is actually a beautiful stance, by the way. If anybody ever wants to, uh, ever wants to get into that, I'll do a video on it sometime. So, I'm in that position. I bend at the waist. I made the punch miss. I'm still loaded in a position of punch. I'm in a position to make the next punch miss. I can catch punches when I get down there. I can jab. My leg movement isn't inhibited. I can move my feet from down there. I'm not held in place, okay? My head is off the center line. I've just done a video on the center line. I've explained the center line. And now you should, if you've watched that video, know why that line is so important, okay? By bending at the hips, I get myself off that center line, off that center line, off that center line all the time, okay? I bend at the hips. I roll at the hips, I bend at the hips, I roll at the hips. Now, what you'll notice here as I step back is that my knees are soft, okay? My knees are soft, I'm not stiff-legged. I'm not stiff-legged, my legs are relaxed. If your legs are stiff, the hip hinge becomes dangerous. You're gonna hurt your back, you're gonna hurt your hamstrings, you're gonna do yourself damage. You're gonna be slower, you're gonna be heavier-legged. The opposite is also true. If I don't hip hinge and I bend at my legs loads, A, my head doesn't really go anywhere. Put your finger on right on the end of my nose here and watch how long it takes my head to get out of the way. That's a long movement, that's a deep movement. When I get down there, my legs are stuck, they're heavy, they're stuck in mud, it's gonna waste energy, it's gonna drain your energy reserves. I don't wanna be down here, okay? 
the only movement I can get from there is upwards. That's the only explosive movement I've got. If I'm down here, my knees are soft, my hips are offset, I'm nicely balanced, I can throw my punches from there, I can move around, change position, I can step out with a jab, I can move again, come again with punches. You've got so many options, the list is endless. Using them legs just gets you stuck, tired, drained, and in a position where you can be manipulated quite easily. If somebody drops their legs too low on me, what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna lay straight on top of them. Works for Tyson Fury all of the time, literally all of the time. People try and dip in with low legs, bop, weight on them, lock them up, wrap their arms up, little clips and hits. Turn out, turn out, bop, bop, ref says break. You reset, they've got to try and do the same again and it fails, inevitably fails. People always quote this kind of stupid Mike Tyson peekaboo rubbish at me all the time. It's just not true. Mike Tyson used a great hip hinge. If you watch Mike Tyson coming in, when he's on the, on the pads with uh, Rooney, he's going here. It's hip hinge, it's hip hinge, it's hip hinge. It's not knees, he's not down here going, twisting his shoulders with a low bend. When he bends his knees, that's to generate more leverage. Look where his head goes, over the bent leg, and then he comes up exploding with shots. Down here, whap, whap, whap. Changing position, his legs bend a lot, that was part and parcel of his fighting style, but the hip hinge is still there. If you don't hinge your hips, if you just bend your legs, you're not actually going anywhere, okay? The roll itself, right? Now, this is something that probably people feel most strongly about. Head up so that your eyes are on the target. Roll round, absolute trash, okay? Roll round, look how wet. My head's not really going anywhere. My eyes are up, okay? What I wanna do is dip the head. Look at the tops of the eyes if possible. Boom, I'm under, boom, I'm under. Boom, I'm under. Boom, I'm under. It's a shorter, faster movement. If somebody's throwing a hook here and I don't dip my head, I, like, so this is the height of the hook, I've got to go all the way down there to get under it with my knee movement. If I dip my head, you can do that with a much shorter upper body movement, hinge and hips. Whap, whap, whap. Boom, boom. You've got all those options, okay? Again, I'm going to include examples of this at the end of the video. So stay tuned and watch it all the way to the end. You'll see all the clips of guys that I'm talking about doing exactly this, okay? I'm going to use all of those big names I mentioned at the start, if possible, if I don't infringe any sort of copyright rules. Now, hip hinge. The other good thing about the hip hinge is a faster transfer from position. So if I have to go here, here, and my legs are overly involved all the time, I throw the punch, I've got to keep coming up and down. Unless I'm going to stay down and throw the punches from down there, then you're sacrificing height and position completely unnecessarily, all right? Whereas if I come here and here, here and here and here, 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 head dips, drop, under, under, bop, bop, under, pull back, drop, round, shoulder, slip, roll. The fluidity is there. It's much smoother. It's much easier. Watch James Tony move his head. It's exactly that, all at the hips. Loads of head movement, dips his head, points the forehead at people, looks at the tops of his eyes, uses the shoulder. Same thing, even when you watch Muhammad Ali, he's in the corner doing all the head movement. He's not up like that with his chin, he's dipped down, he's bending at the hips, bending at the waist. He's not bending at the legs to make all those punches miss. I mean, I can't give you any more examples in speech than I already have, and that I'm gonna include at the end of this video. Everybody that's ever been good at moving their head has used their hip hinge, okay? We slip this side, we bend at the hips, the weight is offset. This way it gives me a good center of gravity. My knees are still soft, so I have good lateral stability, good balance. I go over the other side, same thing. I'm over here, my head's off the center line. Weight's in the middle of my feet, but that head's over the front leg. I can come back, my head's off the center line. I drop the head to roll, I drop the head to roll, looking out the tops of my eyes. Boom, boom, it becomes a shorter, faster movement. It doesn't have to be so dramatic. There's a lot of good coaches who are doing this the way that I do it. There are a lot of good coaches who do it slightly differently, but there's still a hip hinge, a little bit more leg movement, a little bit more dynamism, whatever. Um, but there's also an awful lot of coaches teaching people to use their legs primarily as defense. Watch what happens to those fighters. Watch how many fighters go out there um, looking great on the pads, making all these punches miss, and then they're getting hit with jabs left, right, and center. The reason is that head movement is ineffective. They're not practicing actually making a real punch, a real fist miss. They're just going while their pad man shortens punches and does this and they go, 
It's just fake. It doesn't do anything. It's not benefiting anyone. All you're seeing is a, a, is a generation of boxers whose defense is utterly trash. And then you end up with guys like Shakur Stevenson who are so far ahead of them because they've got a bit of decent footwork, a good controlling mechanism, a nice jab, and they're able to move the head. Same with Terence Crawford. Same with Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather used correct, accurate, old school defense methods. And he was absolutely miles ahead of everybody. Miles ahead of everybody. He made Pacquiao look like an absolute amateur. He made Canelo look like an absolute amateur. He had his hardest fights at lightweight when he was a more aggressive boxer trying to throw loads of punches. The minute he dialed it back, got more defensive. Nobody had a chance. The closest fights I saw him in were Canelo and De La Hoya, um, who both went with a high volume uh, outlook. The first Maidana fight, unconventional angles. I've done a video on this in the past, by the way, so if you want to check out my How to Break the Philly Shell video, check that out. But I, I went through why Floyd overcame it in the second fight anyway. Um, but yeah, so, so that's that, guys. Hip hinge all the time. Should be moving by bending at the waist, keeping your eyes averted, Look out the tops of your eyes, chin tucked all the time. That way, if you get caught, you're getting hit on the boniest part of the head. I'm not getting hit up there in the face that sends my head back, makes me weak in the traps. I can engage the traps to protect me, so if anything does hit me, I have resistance. I'm in a position to punch hard, and I can punch with my movement. By bending at the hips, it gives me a way to punch as I move, rather than relying on punching afterwards. There we have it. Now it's time for all of those clips. Thank you for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And let's get on with these videos now.